Block 20 of the Tunisian Sampler Afghan is the puff block. And here are the little puffs, and here's what I've done with this block so far. So for my sample, I've made a chain of 15 stitches, and I've done four rows of the simple stitch. And on my fifth row, which is going to be starting this little puff right here, I've gone to the halfway mark, which is basically I have now seven simple stitches, well the end stitch plus six simple stitches to get right to the eighth stitch which is smack dab in the middle. To make your puff stitch you're going to yarn over and you're going to go through that stitch front to back like you do for a knit stitch and you're going to draw up a loop. Then yarn over, go back in that same stitch again, draw up a loop. Yarn over, go through that same stitch again and draw up a loop. And then take those six stitches, which is your yarn over stitch and your draw up loop, and you're going to yarn over and draw th through all six of those stitches, which I'm trying to do watching through the camera versus looking at my work. Okay, so I've got them through all six, then you chain one to close it. Then you go back to your simple stitch the rest of the way across for the sample anyway. And I'll explain the spacing math on my block here in just a second. then your normal yarn over and draw through two all the way across. Oops, lost some of my yarn there. Cotton splits. Now, this puff right here is actually a three row series. In the first row, we did one puff. In the second row, we did three puffs. In the third row, it was one puff. And so I have to decrease by one. And really, I don't count stitches because I tend to do this while I'm watching television, so I don't want to be counting. What I do is just look at the work. Okay, I'm going to have to put a stitch there and then a stitch on each side of that. So I'm going to simple stitch up to that point and then I'm going to do my puff stitch. And it's the same, yarn over, draw up, yarn over, draw up, yarn over, draw up. Three times till you have six loops that you draw through and you're going to yarn over, draw through all six of those loops which is hard to do when I'm watching it on the camera. I'm going to peek around here and do it this way. Okay, and I'm there, and I know I got off camera, but I'm just struggling. There we go. And then I did my chain one, and I'm going to do that in this one and this one. Then my third row, I'm going to come back, and I'm just going to do it in the center one again. So that's how the puff stitch. I, it, I know it looks hard the way I'm doing it, but primarily trying to do it in front of a camera or looking through a camera screen is not the same as just doing it. Okay, so what's the math? <clears throat> I did, uh, for those that have watched my videos, you're aware of the fact that my blocks were all 36 inches or 36 stitches wide and 29 inches tall. And so I wanted to do three puffs, then the next one, two puffs, and then three puffs, two puffs till the end of the block. So I had to figure out the spacing between the puffs as well as uh, up and down as well as left and right. Okay, so since there's three and there's a stitch there, a stitch there, a stitch there, take three from 36 and you're left with 33. Well, one of those is your end stitch, your end stitch over here. So that leaves you with 32. And I have four spaces I'm trying to, to fill. 
So naturally you think, okay, eight stitches for each section makes it nice and even. The problem with that is that I need to have an odd number here in between in order for this to split right down the middle. So instead of going eight, 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 and eight, I chose to do nine, seven, seven, nine. Now I could just as easily have done seven, nine, nine, seven. I just chose seven. And so I will, when it's time to get to this section here, I will go in the original nine plus 10 plus three to get right smack dab in the middle there. So that's 13 stitches in to start the first one. Well, if I'm going from this way, the first one. Then I'll do my seven stitches, just like I've done seven here, and then I'll do 13 on that side. And it's worked out really well. Uh, the spacing up and down. I started with four rows of simple stitch for the beginning of the block. Then these are three rows. And then I'm doing three rows spacing in between each one. So that's four plus three is seven, plus three is 10 plus three is 13. So 13 covers from here to here. Take that times two, that's 26. Then I add my final three rows for the top border, that's 29. So it's worked out perfectly in my situation. But that gives you an idea of how to do the math for your particular block. So that is block 20, the puff block. We'll have more samples of these, uh, I, I call them my 3D blocks where you know uh, things puff out. I'm used to doing what's called the popcorn stitch. I think they refer to it in this leaflet as the pebble stitch. And when I'm talking about leaflet, I'm talking about leaflet, uh, Leisure Arts, an Afghan stitch sampler, and it's a sampler that contains 52 different Tunisian stitches uh, for blocks. And that's what I'm basing this Afghan on. I'm, I, I'm taking each one of their examples of different stitches, and I'm making a block out of it. I'm not exactly following their pattern as far as the size of the blocks and sometimes not the spacing. So um, I'm showing you how I'm figuring the math for my particular size of block. So nice pattern, or nice leaflet. I highly recommend it. I'm not affiliated with Leisure Arts. That uh, leaflet was in print years ago. It is now out of print, but they do offer it on their website as a PDF download. So thought I'd share that with you. Highly recommend it. Thanks for watching. Bye.